What's good, YouTube? This video is going to be on the dark tactic that men are taught by other YouTubers, other gurus, other red pill creators, alpha male creators, uh, playboy trainers, and pickup artists. Now, again, just like my last video, the disclaimer, many women require this stuff. Many women require active invalidation for them to feel like a guy is worth chasing, for them to feel like he is valuable enough to chase, for them to feel the, the hint of chemistry that they all say they have. Many women have chemistry with these tactics and the man doesn't matter. He's interchangeable as long as he applies these tactics. If you have an issue with finding the same types of guys who are playing games, then you need to sit with yourself and figure out if it's the programming that's causing you to respond to the same things over and over because good men don't generally apply tactics for the most part. And when they don't apply tactics, you feel like there's no chemistry. You're bored. You figured them out. There's not enough mystery. Sometimes it's your programming causing you to attract the same types of guys, respond to them, and then deal with them a lot longer so you feel like you're not finding good men or good men don't exist. When really you've completely looked over most good men because they don't match your programming to need invalidation from a guy. So again, be disgusted at the tactic. As dark, as nasty, as weak man shit, be absolutely disgusted, but also be critical. Be thinking critically about what actually causes you to respond to the same type of stupid stuff every time. Why you always find yourself dealing with a man who you have to chase, who makes you feel unvalidated, who makes you feel unloved and used and uncared for. Why you're so responsive to this, but you put roadblocks in front of a man who bores you because he's not doing this. Is he boring or is he just not using a tactic? Really sit with yourself and figure out if you're a part of your own problem. But with that said, we're going to discuss this weak man tactic that men are taught by other creators. And that tactic is to strategically and intentionally on purpose not contact the women after sex. Yes, that's right. Men are taught to not contact women after sex by their alpha male. And uh, you, I already talked about all those creators, the red pill guys. They're taught to make a woman wait for validation after she's given herself to you. Knowing that there's always this flip of a switch when a woman has sex with a guy that they may be going into a different direction or the, the directional plane has elevated. Right. Even so, these men are doing this because they want that woman to not only chase them, but start to become subservient to them. Because once a woman has sex with a guy, she generally tries to give him more opportunities and more chances to be great because she doesn't want to have wasted that experience on the wrong person. But once a woman lays with a guy, even if she was about to cut him off, she reconsiders it. She might give him two, three weeks, four more months, a year to get it together because she doesn't want to have slept with another guy who didn't turn into anything from an emotional place. Women hate feeling like they've slept with the wrong guy. So they try to make the wrong guy the right guy by sticking it out. Men know this. And so they start to play manipulation games after sex because that's when they get the power to control you. That's when they have complete 100 percent dominion over the dynamic of the relationship because you've given it to them because you still require validation. And then he didn't call you back. So you didn't receive the validation you wanted, but you've also given up something that was your leverage. Men do this because they don't want to have to work for you. They want you to be subservient. This is the hook and bait. Now he can control you. Now he can make you do whatever he wants you to do. Now he can play with you, waste your time, get you to do him favors. You become so much more usable and so much more manipulatable once you've decided to contact him first after sex. Men know they're supposed to contact you. They know what the gentlemanly thing to do is. When they don't do the gentlemanly thing, it's always strategic. It is a tactic. Just like you say please and thank you and yes ma'am and no sir, you call a woman after you've laid with her. We know this. Now again, for those of you who are new to my channel, I've coached over 5,000 women, so this isn't some shit I'm just making up. I'm not just a person who talks to cameras. I talk to people. I try to help people repair the brokenness in their own lives and love lives. So I'm not just coming from a place of hypothesis. I've had these conversations. I've helped people work through this stuff. And if you want coaching, go to girltalkwithguys.com. The link is in the description. But anyway, I have a lot of clients. I can't tell you how many hundreds of women I've talked to who needed to book a call because after they had sex, the dynamic changed. After they had sex, the guy didn't call and it made them feel all kind of anxiety, all kind of fear, all kind of stress, all kind of worry. So what they did is they became more usable. They called me to ask me if it was a good idea for them to call him, if it was a good idea for them to get him a gift, if it was a good idea for him to, them to show up at his job, if it was a good idea for them to beg for his forgiveness if they offended him, if it was a good idea for them to apologize for it not being good enough, if it was a good 
good idea for them to go over there and have sex with him again and maybe prove themselves this time if they should let him call. There's so much anxiety around what it means if it was a good idea for them to ask what we're doing now. What are we? Are we together? Are we exclusive? First of all, I just hate this. Um, when I'm having these conversations, most women are trying to have the exclusive conversation after you've already opened your legs. Love and respect. I'm not here to control women's bodies or teach women how to be women, but I can tell you the absolute wrong time to ask what we're doing to get clarity on whether or not sex meant a relationship is after it. Too many people are too afraid to have the conversation about sex before sex, and then you have to have an awkward conversation from a place of anxiety after you have sex to hope that that sex meant we're more committed than we were before we had sex or that we're exclusive or that we see each other as valuable partners potentially and we want to pursue the same thing in each other. It is not the time to have that conversation after a guy doesn't call you because you had sex with him. If you don't hear from a guy after sex, he's doing it intentionally, he's being a dick, you should probably never speak to him again. Do not waste your time trying to turn a square peg into a round hole by validating this man, by chasing him down just because you don't want to have wasted your time with the wrong person. You wasted your time and having sex with the wrong person does feel like shit. I get it. I understand. But you had a choice to make, to have a conversation, to get clarity, to watch him a little bit longer, to masturbate. You could have done anything else, but you decided to give yourself away to this man who ultimately doesn't respect you. It is not completely your fault. You share fault because it takes two. But when a man is strategically invalidating you after sex, he is the worst type of person because he will do anything to destroy your ego. And that's not what you want in a relationship. He can't even offer you a healthy relationship because he lacks the ability to validate you in the ways that you would need it emotionally. And we all need validation sometimes, especially from our partners. So this is a red flag because it's abusive. It's actually an offensive move, even though it looks like indifference. It looks like, oh, I just forgot. Listen, ladies, guys know how vulnerable you are right after sex. And if he would take that and strategically hurt you on purpose, there's no end to what he might do to maintain his leverage and his dominance and his power over you to get you to submit to him. Please don't be that girl that gives a man even more time to play with you because you don't want to feel like you've wasted your time. It's OK to admit defeat, especially if it's going to save you months or years of agony because you're still trying to make this weak man work. Sometimes things feel like they're just circumstantial when really a man is strategically invalidating a woman and trying to hurt and harm her ego in ways that give him more power and leverage over her in a relationship, setting the bar too low for himself for her to ever really expect a healthy relationship, but always chase after it. A woman chasing validation is the easiest woman to manipulate in the world. She doesn't require anything. She gives everything of herself. She's the most convenient and the most entertaining and you can move on to other women and handle them and juggle them effortlessly because you don't have to focus on or give attention to this woman or even give her time once she decides she's chasing your validation. So when a man neglects you after sex, you really have to consider what the hell's going on. And you probably should have a very good conversation with him. If you insist on still talking to him, you need to discuss this. You need to figure out why the hell he didn't consider what you might need emotionally after such an act. But I can tell you truthfully, most likely he already Already knows and he did it on purpose. So yes, be disgusted with these tactics. Be mad, be irritated, be furious, but stop responding to this mess. Stop requiring good men to pretend to be shitty men just to get anywhere with you. Stop requiring invalidation. Stop responding to men who are cold to you. Stop assuming masculinity is cold heart exclusive. So many of y'all require this type of stuff. And again, I'm having these conversations with women. I can draw an easy line between what they've experienced and what they've actually required energetically from a guy. So I'm not just making this up. I'm not just YouTubing. I know what I'm talking about. Some of you have some trauma bonding that you're going through. Some of you have some inner childhood issues that you need to work on that you need to fix. You need to go get help about some of this stuff because it's causing you to seek out the same toxic environments that many of you were raised in with invalidating relationships that you constantly are chasing validation in. Man after man after man, you thinking there's no good men when really you're not responding to good men because you don't even see them. Sometimes boredom is peace. And many of us aren't trained or equipped enough to handle peace. But that's another topic. Anyway, follow me at KevVic24 on Instagram. I'll get with y'all later.